Good evening. I spoke with Thelma Chandler uh, earlier today and so um, his parents are with him at Vanderbilt but his uh, brain activity is um, uh, everything's just a lot better today so it was just some really good signs uh, compared to where they've been the past few days so we won't go into a lot of details because this is online but uh, Thelma did ask to thank everybody for praying for her nephew and I'm sure a lot of you at home have called her and talked to her and you know how worried she was about him so it's uh, God is good and, and he hears our prayers so we just wanted to let everybody know um, an update there's a lot of us like Miss Thelma or even maybe you and and I who feel like we're, we're, we're kind of powerless I kind of hate to keep talking about the situation we're all in but it's a situation we're all in. So there's a lot of us who are feeling this way. You know, we feel powerless. We feel like we're not going anywhere. And the reason is we're literally not going anywhere. Uh, we're just kind of sitting around and there's nobody to interact with. And we have these feelings of desperation. I want to tell you tonight that the problem is havoc on you. A lot of the people that I'm dealing with, a lot of my friends, uh, have a friend who got a new job at the, or uh, got a new job the first of the year and that job was in the service industry well we all know where the service jobs went another person that um, I'm good friends with started a new job and it was a new position and right when they started there's really not a, a good way to do that and even one of my best friends who just moved he moved and was going to get a job as soon as he moved and that just now he's sitting at home with the kids, which is not a bad thing, but it isn't what he planned. And it's not just employment, you know, and there's that the kids go back. It's just this feeling. We feel like a, a hamster in a constant wheel. And those feelings start to mess with us. Those feelings start to talk to us. We lay in bed at night and stare at the ceiling or we sit in our cars and stare at the empty roads and they find us in our most vulnerable places they make us feel underappreciated very non-essential those feelings and tonight um, for anybody who feels that way for anybody who feels that they're not making a difference or for anybody who feels powerless or for anybody Nine. It's a random psalm, you know. Maybe we should talk about the Gospels or something, but it's this psalm that's tucked away. But in the Psalter, if you've had these feelings, I hope you'll read it. And I hope it'll give you some encouragement, because when you read this psalm, what you discover is that there are four truths to life, no matter how discouraged you feel, no matter where those feelings of depression and anxiety find you. Psalm yellow sticky notes, put it in your car, keep it at your desk, put it on your refrigerator, but find some verses in that psalm because they give us hope and they remind us of when we get those feelings, when we feel underappreciated and underpaid. It just reminds us how essential we are to God. I want to share those four truths with you tonight. Here's truth number one. No matter what you are or no matter where you are, Your English Bible may not do a good job of it. Um, if you know me, you know I never think it does. But um, the first five verses there, if you'll, if you'll notice something, if you look at it, what you'll notice is that the psalmist uses eight Hebrew words to describe what God's doing. And really what he's saying is the same thing. See the different eight. So I'm translating these different words with different English words so that you kind of see it, but look at the very beginning here. He says, you have searched me, O Lord, and you understand me. You know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You see how he's saying the same thing? You searched, you know, you, you perceive. Measure how I go out. And when I come in, you are familiar with all my roads, with my ways. 
Verse 4, he says, Before a word is even on my tongue, you, O Lord, are aware of it completely. You you, you lay your hand upon me. See all eight of those words. God knows everything about your life. He knows the good. He knows the bad. He knows what you need. He knows your strengths. He knows it all. There's nothing you can do to hide it from him. And that's a good thing because there's nothing we can hide from him. But it's also a bad thing because it means there's nothing we can hide from him. Sometimes we just feel like say, I started a new job a while back, and I had worked for this company before in the past. I had done some work for them, and so when they asked me to come work for them, I, I kind of thought I knew what I was doing, and they knew what I could do. And so they wanted me to come in, and I could work at a local office. Maybe I could just push some paper around. It'd be easy. Well, the boss decided she'd bring me up to the big office, which is 40 miles or 40 minutes away. I did fighting traffic, and, and I get there, and everybody at the big office had their own little office and with a door and their chair. Not me. Oh, no. The boss brought me in to her office, and she put up a little bitty table in the corner, and she put a little computer there for me to just work on. And what she wanted to do was just to watch me do everything. And usually I thought people... How she trained me was she just threw me right into the fire and said, go do it. And I had about 100 or 150 mistakes an hour because I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I did, but I really didn't. And every five minutes, I hear this voice behind me saying, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't put that there. Don't put that there. Put it up there on the other screen. Go online and get that. Call the IT guy and have him fix that. For about five weeks, so you just kind of stand there for nine hours doing this, feeling like somebody's going to yell at you the whole time. Well, I felt like somebody wasn't really leaving me alone. And as that psalmist says, you, know, you encircle me, you, you find me, you're, you're, you know me. It's kind of... ...sent home, and when everybody else in the department 